this, as of right now, is the cheapest 3D belt printer that money can buy. Oh yeah, we're really getting into the meat and potatoes kind of stuff that we're talking about here. Anywhere from 750 to 850, your hard earned, or let's be honest, gifted dollars, right now gets you an actual working belt printer that's built like an absolute brick house. So if you want to know if the cheapest 3D belt printer that money can buy right now is worth it, then I'd say, yeah. Honestly, chances are that you already know your particular use case for it and that you aren't a complete normie getting into the 3D printing hobby and are just looking at ways to justify the cash outlay to yourself or your parents or I don't know, maybe your cat. Look, look, I'm not going to judge. I don't know your social hierarchy, wherever you are out there. Just look. Take the factory ready assembly, the factory ready leveling and included settings on the micro SD and just go for it. Also, uh, turn on your Z hop. I found that it knocked around a bit and failed way fewer pins when I enabled this. And go slow. I can't stress that enough. Just go slow. The slower, the better. Honest. And, and make sure you update the firmware and LCD firmware once it comes in. Okay? Okay. So good for now. But to be clear, this video is a review and impression. Yeah, but I'd say it's more of an, an extended introduction to the Sane Smart Infra 20 printer. Sort of, you know, like belt printing in general. Uh, not because I don't think there isn't enough of it to merit something longer in the video, but because there's just so much more that goes into a belt printer than even a 10 or 15 minute video could accurately cover. So stay tuned for more because I'm going to turn this into an entire experience with belt printing and an ongoing series to follow along with for all of us out there. Right, so for starters, I'm not implying that there's anything particularly unique about the Saint Smart Infra 20 belt printer compared to others already and more prominently on the market, not to mention others that will be arriving sooner rather than later, you know? It's not an exact copy of, say, oh, uh, I don't know, the Creality CR30, but there are definite design cues that just can't be ignored when talking about belt printing in general. The angle, you know, of the gantry, a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, the actual belt in the middle of the printer, <laughs> the little things I know here and there that you can't really steer too far away from and still be called what what we as, you know, sort of the masses think of as a belt printer. Also, I'm pretty sure the Saints Mart didn't actually design or make these printers because the Amphi 20 does have similarities with my original MP Select Mini, which is a printer made on contract for monoprice by a company called Mayland. <laughs> I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that it's the case. Saint Smart and this Infra 22. I haven't found it on Mayland's website per se, but I'm Sure, it's out there somewhere. The most noticeable similarity, just real quick, between the two is that unique screen interface. Sure, it's not exactly the same on the Infant 20, but it's pretty darn close. Uh, side note over and getting back to belt printing overall, yes, there are differences about this one by Scene Smart compared to others. Oh, and, and that reminds me, picked up a pack of one millimeter nozzles for this puppy. And let me just say, you want to get subscribed for when that video comes out because wow, it was not what I was expecting at all. Uh, right, so uh, comparison uh, to other printers. Uh, for instance, let me just say, although advertised as Core XY, it's actually just standard Cartesian for the X by Gantry and the belt has these really nice features that help keep it in place as it's chugging along its little weight and little indicators. Check the belt is aligned side to side on the front or back or exit side, whatever you're <laughs> gonna call the little thing. Oh, this place where the little poops come out, that's it. Uh, which is great, but I didn't actually have to adjust them on arrival, so I guess they work well enough. Uh, something that I did have to adjust was the leveling. Well, once I got the test prints and novelty out of the way, yeah, that's right. I did cute little ones that are included with the micro SD because, uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm part of the sheeple when it comes to following instructions in the box. Um, also, let me say that there, as in Saint Smart, 
works fine in Windows, not for Mac, obviously, but you can also use Idea Maker for Windows and Mac. And let me just tell you, I, I think my results after I got used to the idea of Idea Maker were probably maybe a little better in Idea Maker. It mostly comes down to this nice little line that it puts straight across the belt before every single print, as long as you're doing one. It's like a double first layer, single brim sort of thing. Uh, this honestly ensured that probably nine out of 10 prints actually printed. Just make sure you restart the printer before each print if you're gonna use Idea Maker because, well, a bit of weirdness can happen. Anyways, that's, that's, I'm not talking about that now. You're going for sheer production value. You know, pooping stuff out one after the other or other ad nauseum in a sort of production line sort of sense. If you're that kind of person, you're probably better off sticking with Cura, honestly, and that's mainly that the copies functionality actually works in Cura, and it, it works pretty well if you can get it to stick. Idea Maker has a fun way of setting the copies by just printing in the exact same spot over and over. If it wasn't just a complete break in the whole conceptual process of belt printers, I'd actually be amused by it. I mean, it does do sequential printing, but I don't think it's worth the extra hassle involved compared to the Cura implementation. So the simplest way, if you do want multiple copies of something using Idea Maker, again, with the, the, the starting lip and the first frame only on the very first copy that you make, just keep that in mind, then I say duplicate the object and arrange it on the belt. Now only 10 duplicates can be done at a time. So for say for 100 copies, you duplicate 10 of them 10 times over, give or take the initial one, obviously. So yeah, I, I, I think that's all we're probably gonna cover for now and uh, while we start to get into this little belt printing series uh, to wrap up I i'd say it's important to remember that belt printers in general go back to the idea of hobbyist 3d printing you can't expect perfect prints and ideas every single time and just let that creativity flow before you get it all unpacked and sorted as in printing something really big long or a thousand little jimmies in a row right away once you get it home then take some time, especially on orienting your prints with overhangs or uh, your slicer. It just straight up tries to print in midair. It happens a lot. Also, real quick, it, it's super, super important. Make sure that your support settings are set to a straight up and down 90, not a 45, not a 135 left or right. It, I mean, honestly, that's how they were in Idea Maker when I first started. And boy, that was rough. Yeah, it was, it was just plain bad. There's also some legit tweaking that you'll probably go through to get things right even with Sane Smart Secure and Idea Maker profiles starting off in at least the right direction that you should be going now that being said overall yeah I mean this does work straight out of the box I don't think the default 0.15 millimeter layer heights from Sane Smart and their profiles for Cure and Idea Maker really idea for what you'll probably want to do with this printer but it sure highlights just what is possible you know, from the start on what we can call a somewhat emerging technology. And wait, I have to say that the darn belt, boy, let me tell you, it'll never be completely flat, ever. That's just the way these belt printers work. There's some give and some bounce uh, since it's not a rigid or solid surface that you're ever going to come across. Again, you're not painting on the heated plate itself, right? Flexible <laughs> belt, you know? All right, we'll get into it more next time. So stay tuned, subscribe, hit those little notifications, and I'll... See you on the next one.